Hi, welcome to Don's Key Tech. I am back with a new video and I'm going to show you my new project called Using Arduino with BME280 with a Weather Station project. As you can see here, this is the Weather Station dashboard that I have created that will show you the sensor readings coming from my BME280 sensors. At the top of my page are the current values of the temperature, humidity, pressure, and relative altitude, which comes from my BME280 sensor readings. At the rightmost part of the page are the gauge charts representation of my readings. The gauge chart will tell you if the current readings exceeds a particular threshold. So for example, the current threshold for my temperature is 30 degree and the current reading is now 29.6 so it is up by 0.4 from the threshold of 30. The, on the left hand side is my historical line chart of sensor readings. I am taking the last 12 sensor readings and displaying them as line chart. As you can see, I have here the temperature, the pressure, humidity, and altitude also. The user interface automatically updates itself to retrieve the latest sensor readings. So for example, I have here my ESP8266 and my BME280 sensor. And if I try to touch this BME280 sensor here, then I am assuming that the temperature should change. So, right now, the temperature is 29.8. If I touch the BME280, then I am expecting that the temperature should shut up. As you can see in here, the temperature changed to 32.3. And from the line chart, as you can see, it has changed already into the 32 values. Now, if I remove my hands, then I am assuming that the temperature should go down. So right now, it's 32.8. If I remove my hand, then you can see that the temperature reading indeed shut down or went down. I use the Arduino framework in developing this BME280 weather station project. Would you like to know how I did this? Then let's start exploring. Before we start, let us discuss a little bit about what the BME280 sensor is. This sensor was developed by Bosch for mobile and wearable devices application. It is capable of retrieving the temperature, humidity, pressure, and relative altitude with high accuracy. This table here lists some of the important specifications of this sensor. The BME or BMP282 module can use SPI or I2C communication. In my case here, I have an I2C module, so the pinout is the usual SDA and SEL pin plus the power pin PCC and ground. For the wiring, I use an ESP8266 module, so I am using the standard I2C pins on pocket, which are assigned as either D1 and D2 on some boards. The following is the overall design of my Arduino BME280 weather station dashboard. I have created a web server inside my ESP8266 that will create my web application which is the weather station dashboard. The weather station periodically requests sensor readings through HTTP call and when the server receives this request, then it communicates with the BME280 sensor to retrieve the readings. And then the BME280 sensors will send it back to our weather station dashboard to HTTP also. The weather station dashboard in turn 
update its inter user interface asynchronously to show the latest sensor readings. This is the part of my weather station dashboard user interface. The important part are the boxes that list the latest values, the gauge charts, and the line charts here. The sidebar just displays my name in here and the title, which is the dashboard. Now, let us discuss some code on how I was able to create this project. To read the BME 280 sensors, then we use the Adaproot BME 280 level. The code is really simple as we just need to declare an instance of this class called the Adaproot underscore BME 280. In the setup method, we just call the method dot begin, and then we we'll just have to check if the status is okay. If the status is okay, then we should be able to call the the sensor readings by calling this particular method. One is the BME read temperature, the read pressure, read altitude, and read humidity. This is how simple it is to communicate with this sensor. For our BME weather station dashboard, the important components are the main.cpp, which contains our web server, and the files in the data folder, which creates our weather station dashboard. It uses HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And I got the inspiration from the dashboard create page created by the Golding Lab. I will put the link in the description on that awesome dashboard. In the main.cpp file, we have here our asynchronous web server and the Adaproot B underscore BME 280 class also, which is the class that we use to communicate with our BME 282 sensor. In the setup file, we just initialize the serial monitor and our little FS file system. And then we connect to our Wi Fi using this code and define several routes for our web server. As you can see, I have here routes for my root page, which is the backslash which will return the index.html and then I have here also the style.css and for my JavaScript, which is the main.js. The important route here is this one, which is the slash sensor readings, which is a route that returns a readings of our BME 280 sensor in JSON format. As you can see in here, I'm calling the class BME read temperature pressure, altitude, and humidity here. The values in here are returned back to the caller, which in this case is our web application. The loop does not contain any values as the code we are using is a synchronous web server. If we check back the index.html page, then you would see that it contains the HTML elements for our projects and is used to display the sensor reading. Let us scan the important part in here. In the head section, I am importing the box icon, fonts, and the platly.js that I use to display graphs and charts. The sidebar just displays my logo name, which is the Don't Skip Tech. The home section contains the boxes at the top that will display the current sensor reading. The history charts that you can see here, this list of dips contains the HTML dips that will display my line chart and my gauge chart also. These div HTML divs will be populated later by platly.js JavaScript library. The style.css is our cascading file sheet file and it contains classes 
that will beautify our page, which in this case is the index.html. I cannot discuss so much about how this CSS works because that is a big topic on its own. But one thing I can say to learn how it works is to comment everything in here and then I comment it one by one. There you would see the impact of such styling on our index.html page. The last and most important file is the main.js file. It initializes the, all the configurations for our graphs. So as you can see, we have here some history data for temperature trace, humidity, pressure trace, and some setup for the layout. And it's, it's now create a new plot by calling this plotly.newplot JavaScript API function. The Values below are for the gauge data. So this is for the temperature, the humidity, pressure, and altitude data. The same also with the historical line chart, we just call the plotly.newplot, and then we are passing in the configurations that we have prepared in here. You can check more information about the plotly JavaScript API function by going to their website. Then, I have here a list of array variables which will hold the last 12 sensor readings for each sensor data coming from the BME280 sensor. I am limiting the number of value to 12, which means that I will only be storing the last 12 sensor readings. Now, the function update sensor readings is an impact important function. This will call our route slash sensor readings, which you can see in the BME280 slash sensor readings also. And then what this function will do is, is to call our route slash sensor JSON, and then it will parse the JSON response. Using the data retrieved from the web server, then we can now update our user interface using this sub action called the update boxes, update gauge, and update charts. All of these functions just calls the Plotly JS API functions. So for example, let's see the update boxes. In the update boxes, we just change the value of our inner HTML for our text box, text box at the top. For the gauge value, we just call the plotly.update and then passing in the new information like for example the new temperature update. It, the same also for the other one which is the update charts which, which just basically update our line chart. The last function is what we use to automatically trigger a refresh of our page every 3 seconds. We have set a loop function here that will call our update sensor reading functions every three seconds. That is all for the code. In order to deploy this project, then we first need to upload our data folder into the file system of our ESP8266. And to do that, just go into the platform I.O. icon here and then upload the file system image. Upon uploading the file system image, then we can now go into the upload and monitor and then wait for the, the IP address to be printed out. So for example, this is an example output from my more serial monitor. The IP address is this one, and then we can just go into our browser and then type it in here. So my dashboard is initially has no data, but now since we are able to retrieve the values asynchronously, but the values in the line charts are now automatically populated. That is how my project works. And if there are any questions or comments, then please ask this in the companion write-up of this video. The companion write-up, the code, and everything are in the description of this video also. I hope you learned something. Happy exploring!